All right, let's go to Hebrews 11, chapter 1, chapter, I mean, verse 1, Hebrews 11, verse 1. <clears throat> now, we're going to be talking about right now what, what faith is or faith defined. Now, let me tell you why we, 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 we offer this course, number one, in the Bible College School of Ministry, because anyone, every believer, essentially needs to know how to operate in faith. And I, let, let me clarify why I said that. Before we go to Hebrews 11 and 1, I want you to go down for me in just a second and read Hebrews 11 and 6. Uh, but every, every believer needs to know how to operate in faith uh, because all the promises of God, all the provisions of God are received by and through faith. And then anyone that, that is called to ministry, that may be uh, in the confines of five-fold ministry gifts, or they definitely need to know how to operate in faith because it's going to take faith to sustain them, faith to create growth. And so in the natural life, from a natural side, from a layperson's uh, perspective, this course is good because it helps them understand what faith is because many people will think they're in faith. That's why one of your books that you have to have uh, is, is, is uh, Faith, Foolishness, and Presumption by Dr. Fred Price. Another one is The Creative Power of the Tongue by uh, Dr. Charles Capps. And then the last one is a book on, on, on sermons by Dr. Smith Wigglesworth who operated in the strong gift of faith. And But every believer needs to know how to operate in faith. The layperson needs faith to be successful just in life. And when we read Hebrews 11 and 6, uh, read that for me. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Okay, so now we need to just get that embedded in our spirits and in our minds, regardless uh, of what, what, what you've been thinking. So the number one thing concerning faith is, is that we, know, we understand that faith pleases God. Faith pleases God. There's another scripture, we won't go there tonight, but that says whatever is not of faith is sin. So for you not to operate or know how to operate in faith, the Bible says that that's sin. So it's imperative then that a believer understand that if I'm going to please God, I have to be living a life filled with faith. So that means God has displeasure if I don't live a life full of faith. Because if faith pleases him, then we understand that if we're not in faith, he must be displeased. So now we're going to go deal with the, uh, faith defined. Go to Hebrews 11 and 1 and let's dissect this scripture real carefully. Actually, the, the 11th chapter of Hebrews it is, the, it is the book dedicated to the superiority of faith. There is, in, in, in that one chapter, they have what I note as the Hall of Fame of Faith or the Hall of Fame of the Faithful. Just in that one chapter of Scripture, so much is, is, is expounded on about faith till it's, it's all but revolutionary. But now, when we look at Hebrews 11 and 1, come on, read that for me, please. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen. So number one thing we need to know about faith, the number one thing we need to know about faith, that faith, number one, pleases God. Number two, then let's say it like that, faith pleases God. Number two, faith must always be in the present tense. Faith is or must always be in the present tense. So sometimes you hear people say, I'm believing God for something, whether it's something physical uh, where that, that's misinterpretation of faith in operation. Because if, if faith is present tense, if I'm saying I'm believing God for, that's future tense. 
So my mindset and my understanding of just the functionality of it, well, when I, when I approach this, this faith realm, I have, to, I have to have the mindset that faith is right now. Faith is not what's going to be, but faith is right now. Now faith is. So faith then is always in the present tense. Now, then, then it goes on to give us a list. Not only is it always in the present tense, but faith is substance. And faith is evidence. Wow. See, they have to throw cases out of the court system if they do not have evidence. So, those primary things, understanding about faith, then that faith, I, if I'm in faith, I'm, it's always right now. It's, it's not God's going to do, it's God has done. As I, I state this all the time, the problem is never with God. The problem is always with us receiving uh, uh, two things about faith uh, that, 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 that we can uh, ascertain that people generally sometimes misinterpret is that, uh, how can I say this? It's either being miscommunicated or misunderstood. It's either being miscommunicated or misunderstood. So miscommunication will come from the teacher to the pupil or from the reader to whatever they're comprehending from whatever it is they're reading. So then, now, if, if it's miscommunicated, then it's most definitely going to be misunderstood. Or if I don't hear properly, that's why Jesus said, be careful how you hear. Not only what you hear, but how you listen to it. Because it's going to determine how you process this information and what's going to ultimately cause either manifestation or dis dysfunctionality in whatever you're trying to accomplish. So then I, I must understand that faith is always in the present tense. Faith is now. Then the, the first thing he says, faith is substance. It's the substance of what? It's substance and it's evidence of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So, so then faith is a creative force. Faith is always, it pleases God, it's present tense, faith pleases God, faith is present tense, faith is substance, the, it is the substance of things hoped for. Now that hope is not an iffy hope. You, you know, like somebody, I'm, I'm wishing for something. It, it is a, a, a level of expectation. That hope is an expected outcome. It is a goal. 